Hello. Welcome to today's live. Give everyone some time to settle in. And if you're here, I would love to uh, hear from you in the comments. So let me know that you're here, where you're uh, watching from today. And I'm going to get my notes set up. You know, I also noticed the little tassels back there. I'm going to fix them. That's better. Okay, so here we are. All right, as you know, today uh, we're going to talk about your feet. And this is like, I cannot emphasize how important and essential this topic is, but it is often the most neglected part of your body. And um, it's even like in a weird taboo area, you know, um, where people don't want to talk about it. Like, ew, feet, ew, ew. But it's not like that. And it doesn't have to be like that. And um, our feet are an extension of our body. Uh, not only that, they are the foundation of our body. So that is a huge reason why I want to talk to you today. And um, let's set aside any preconceived notions about our feet. Uh, because I have a lot of great lessons that I would like to share with you today. But before we get to that, hi, hello, welcome. And I would love uh, for you to comment an emoji right now that represents your foot health. So really think about it maybe. Maybe you don't have to think about it. Maybe you're like, I know exactly what that is. Uh, how is your foot mobility? How is your foot health? How is your foot awareness? Um, how much are your feet playing a role into your overall well being and your fitness? Um, so, definitely put that emoji in the comments. And if you want to add a little bit of an explanation, you can do that too. I'm seeing some thumbs down, some thumbs up, some like, ah, some crying emojis, some meh. Looks like there's a, ooh, like, uh, for sure. <laughs> Some of this. Yeah. There's a lot of feelings um, and not a lot of feeling in our feet. My goal is to help you bring your yoga practice full body Um and to help you get your foot health and your foot mobility um, to a place that can support your body and help you prevent injury and uh, just be a part of your overall healthy lifestyle. Your feet are meant to support you. I'm seeing cramps a lot at night. The reflexology chart explains discomfort perfectly. Heel hurts. Yeah. Um, so little backstory before we get started. I um, wore orthotics for like 15 plus years. Um, essentially, I think like 17 years. I, I got orthotics when I was 14 because I was a cross country runner. Well, I just became a cross country runner and very, very quickly my legs and my IT bands just hurt. Uh, my hips hurt, my knees hurt, everything hurt. Um, so I went to you know, a specialist and they told me, oh, this is what's wrong with your body. And they gave me orthotics to balance me out. And I wore orthotics from the age of 14 until about a year and a half ago. I was dependent on these orthotics. Um, I was afraid that someone would steal my shoes, like at a yoga class or at, you know, anytime you take your shoes off somewhere, I was afraid and anxious and thinking about my shoes because of my orthotics in them. Um, that's how dependent I was. Cause if you've ever had orthotics, you know that they're super expensive and uh, you're pretty dependent. And if I ever uh, went for a walk or worked out or did movement wise without my orthotics, Ooh, I felt that it hurt. And um, I started working with a trainer a year and a half ago, well, two years ago, who um, 
was really into foot mobility and really into foot health. And he wore barefoot shoes constantly. Um, the ones that like look kind of weird too. And I'm familiar with foot health and foot mobility. Um, but I just knew like I, I, but I have to wear my orthotics when I work out, I might be able to wear like these Vibram five finger toe shoes elsewhere, or I have dabbled in that, but I have to wear my orthotics. And so I was working with him and, um, I started to learn all these different foot mobility exercises and over the course of a couple of weeks, as I started to turn these exercises into a routine, essentially building out a program, I got out of my orthotics and I've been out of my orthotics since, and I've been wearing barefoot shoes since. And I can't tell you how freeing it is not only to like be away from this thing that is, I was so dependent on, but also to feel so comfortable in my body and to be able to navigate the earth and have that connection to the ground beneath me and to trust my body, to trust the mobility and the strength and the flexibility of my feet, my ankles, my knees, my hips, my back, my shoulders, like it's all ground up and it starts with your feet. Okay, so there's that little backstory there. <laughs> Today, I wanna share with you why your feet, although the most neglected part of your body, are the most important part of your yoga practice. So if you are new here, you've never seen me before, hi, I'm Sarah Beth from Sarah Beth Yoga. And if you're like me, then you've probably heard about the benefit of barefoot shoes, walking barefoot and foot mobility, but the idea of just going flat foot sounds painful and like kind of weird. So today I'm going to share why your feet, although the most neglected part, are the most important part of your practice, your physical movement, and your overall health. And if you stay till the end, I'll take some time to chat with you in the comments and answer questions in Q&A. But for now, pay attention, take notes if you have questions so that you can ask me in the Q&A later. And please don't be shy in the comments. This is how I can connect with you. So... Once again, I am Sarah Beth from Sarah Beth Yoga. I'm a wife, a mother, an author, and a business owner, and a YouTuber with over one and a half million subscribers. And I also launched the Sarah Beth Yoga app with thousands of members all around the world. The lessons that I will share with you today will help you to understand why your foot health is essential for your overall health, how you can improve balance and stability and protect yourself from injury, how you can start mobilizing your feet so they become strong and healthy, how you can choose more mindful footwear, and how these short practices that I've created can help you prevent and relieve common foot issues like weak arches, high arches, flat feet, plantar fasciitis, ankle, knee, hip pain, and so much more. So sit tight and let's get to it. But first, let's get into the foundation because your feet are the foundation of your body. Your feet are your foundation of your strength and your flexibility. When I talk about mobility, what I'm talking about is essentially, think of it like this, mobility equals strength plus flexibility. It's this really nice balance between the two. Only strength means you're like a brick. Only flexible means you're like a noodle. You need to have both to be mobile. And if you don't use it, you lose it. But you can get it back with practice. So you need strong feet to carry yourself through your environment and to balance your weight. But you need flexible feet to adapt to your environment and adapt to movement. Years or a lifetime of neglect and wearing stiff pointy shoes can cause your feet to mold into like a brick and they move like that brick. Feet that have been compressed for so long start to lose their ability to function. And even without a shoe, they don't know how to navigate the world around you. And a lot of us 
use these very compressive shoes. And then we come to yoga, we take the shoes off for the first time and we experience things like cramps or instability or a lack of balance. Something it doesn't feel right from the ground up. If your foot can't function the way it was meant to with its 28 bones, 30 ligaments and a hundred muscles, I mean, that's a lot for one unit of your body that has been molded into this like immobile brick, right? So if it can't function using all those muscles and those bones and those ligaments, then it will compensate in other ways by shifting the impact and the misalignment up the joints of your chain. When I say chain, I mean like, you know, your feet to your ankles, to your knees, to your hips, all the way up through your shoulders, your neck. This can and will lead to injury. So I want you to think of your body like a car. And I'm not a car person, so this is like the best analogy that I have. And it might not be the best analogy that I have. But if you were to think of your body like a car, you could drive around with poor alignment in your car, right? Your wheels could be misaligned and you can still drive your car technically, right? But over time, if you don't get those wheels aligned, it's going to jack up your car. It's going to cause way bigger issues down the road. So when that first mechanic comes to you and it say, it says, Hey, um, I need to like fix your wheels. They're not aligned. That's, that's, that's it. Cause yes, you can technically keep walking around with feet that are immobile, but at some point it's going to jack up your body. You're going to feel it. So when your body is giving you signals, Hey, this is it. Let's, let's mobilize these feet. Maybe right now this is your signal, <laughs> then it's time to start paying attention. So let's get into the juicy good parts here. This is where I would say definitely take notes, okay? How do you improve your foot mobility? One, do practices that help you to spread your toes and mobilize your feet. So there's this part of your foot, the um, in between your metatarsals, your toes are, your, are tarsals, um, this part, mobilize this part of your foot. And also not just on your feet and your toes, but mobilize your ankles and your arches. So you can do this through self massage, through specific foot yoga, which is has a lot of like mind to toe connection. Um, the first time I did it, nothing was functioning or firing. And after practice, I actually was able to start firing and get my toes to move the way I wanted them to. I will, I'll help you with this. You also want to make sure that you're doing strengthening exercises, because like I said, it's not just about that limp noodle. It's not just about maybe you're making your feet more flexible. You need flexible and strong, and you can use deep stretches with the ball. And before you get overwhelmed, I have created all of this into yoga videos and programs that are coming out in the next two months. So don't worry, I got you. Um, all of that self-massage, foot yoga, strengthening exercises, and deep stretches with a ball are all essential to making your feet more mobile. And number two is if you really want to make a difference, then at least for a few weeks, you want to immerse into this. So practice foot mobility daily or as often as you can. Don't, don't be hard on yourself if you miss a day or two. But the idea is, is that your body responds to what you demand of it. And so if you can practice your foot yoga and all these different practices, and some of these are like five minute long practices, some of them are 10 minutes and you practice them daily, your body will start to respond to that. And it's even better if you can also practice yoga or go for a walk barefoot, ideally, after you do your foot mobility practice. It's kind of a way to like solidify what you're teaching your body so that your body can actually put it to use right away and, and test these muscles and these ligaments that have woken up right away. But ease into it, you know, don't, don't go for like a three hour walk. Um, the way that I practiced my <coughs> foot mobility daily was um, I had a daily night practice before I went to bed. I would grab, um, I have this like 
lemon cuticle butter from Lush. Um, and I would use that to start to massage out my feet and do the self massage portion. And then I would do some of the foot yoga. And that was how I eased in was I was, I was doing a nightly thing to kind of unwind my feet. And then slowly I started building in my foot yoga during the day, like before exercise, um, before yoga as a way to really start to get my feet mobile. So that might be a good place for you to start. It's just like an evening practice in your bed with some lotion and you're giving your feet love and you can even mentally give your feet love by not allowing yourself to go into these preconceived notions about feet. Like, ew, gross. Like just, hey, feet, thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being with me my entire life and walking my walk. I'm so thankful for you because what if you didn't have them? Now you're thankful for them, right? Um, so that's how I practice daily to start was my evening before bed practice. Now, tip number three is to ease into your barefoot shoes or barefoot in general and be mindful about the footwear that you do choose. So if you're going to start a foot mobility practice, it, you're, you're only going to be fighting yourself if you go from foot mobility to stilettos or you go from foot mobility to like, I hate to like bring up a brand name, but like Nike shoes, which are mostly fashionable. Um, you want to also introduce your um, foot mobility into your footwear. And so I'll share with you exactly um, some tips on that. And I'll show you some of the shoes that I would recommend. Um, but I do have a more extensive list in this program that I've created. So if you're going to look for um, mindful footwear, what you want is to have a wide toe box. So like your feet are not like pointy. They're actually like, look at a baby's foot. Think about a baby's foot. A baby's foot has like nice spread toes. Those are your feet, except that your feet have been molded. So you want to find shoes that will allow your toes to spread because your toes are your balance. Your toes, they, they feel the ground underneath you and they send signals to your brain about your environment. Everything works from like this foundation of like your toes and your feet being able to move and adapt and feel the ground and feel pressure, all of those things. But if your toes aren't what they're, they're asleep, you know, if they're numb, if they're just not feeling and all that's been turned off, you're not going to get that signal. So, um, you want something that has a wide toe box. That's really important to start. So your feet and your toes can start to spread out. And before I go more into the shoes thing, um, there are things called toe spacers that you can look into to help your toes spread out. Cause you might have the shoes on and your toes might still be like this or like even overlapping. So toe spacers can be part of your practice to help um, get your toes to start to spread out. They can be pretty intense though. And so um, if you go and just buy a set of toe spacers, sometimes they're really, they're, they're too much too. So I would recommend using your fingers and thread your fingers between your toes, just at like the first knuckle even sometimes, or maybe even just two fingers to start so that your, your toes can like, okay, we can relax versus you going in all the way and your toes, everything is straining and tensing. What do I tell you in yoga? That if you strain for a deeper stretch, you're only going to strain your body. Same thing here. Don't just like think that forcing it and more is more. It's not the case. You want to train your feet that they can trust you and that is safe for them to wake up and open up. And so start with like knuckle to knuckle, first knuckles, if that works, or just two, if that's all that works today. You can slowly work your way in every day to going a little bit deeper and spreading your toes a little bit further. And that should help. I did use toe spacers in the beginning of my um, foot journey. And um, I didn't use them for very long. I used them for like two weeks. And then I was like, yeah, that's good. I'm good. But for some people, it works um, better than for others. So that's a thing. Um, so wide toe box. And um, you also want the shoe to have zero drop. So instead of, I didn't bring a good example in here. I'm going to grab a shoe real quick and show you. Okay. 
Okay, this is my assistant's shoe. Um, there's a there's a high heel here, and then it gets thinner as she gets closer to the toes. And so this is not a zero drop. This actually has her heels are lifted and elevated all throughout the day, every time she's walking and when she's exercising. I'm gonna go put this back. What happens when your um, heel is elevated all day in your shoes is that you your body thinks that it's falling forward. And so you're recruiting all of these muscles in the front chain of your body to catch yourself all day long. Not only that, but like psychologically, that has an impact on your feelings of stability, security, and connection to the earth beneath you. So... Um, a lot of people will elevate heels because it's it's kind of like orthotics. It can help them feel like they feel better and they don't have as much pain. But um, kind of like orthotics, it's a little bit of a Band-Aid. It's not actually solving the issue and it's actually perpetuating the problem. So you want to look for a shoe that has zero. Um, it's a zero drop. So here is a shoe that has zero drop. And it's actually the white part here isn't the actual um, heel. This wraps around to look like a heel, but inside it's still, it's just as flat. So zero drop means that there is zero elevation between your heel and your midfoot and your toes. Everything is completely flat on the ground when you're walking. This also has a wide toe box. So um, I have narrow feet, which is why they're tied a little tighter here. But right here is spread wide enough. And do you see like it's actually shaped more like a foot instead of instead of curving in here and cutting that big toe off like most shoes do. This allows my foot, my toes to spread naturally in the shoe. This is called Witten. It's from Amazon. And I really, really like this brand because um, they're very affordable shoes and they're a, a nice place to start. Um, they also look more like normal shoes than other barefoot shoes, which are like, some can be kind of odd looking. Um, here's an example. <laughs> This is a, a slightly odd looking barefoot shoe uh, that um, I, I would wear this like hiking, um, especially if it was more like wet or muddy or um, snowing. But this is kind of an um, intermediary shoe. It's got the wide toe box. It's got zero drop. This one's not as flexible as you want it to be. You really want your barefoot, barefoot shoes to be way more flexible. These ones are the ones that I wear every day. So you want a wide toe box, you want zero drop, you want them to be flexible, you know, and you want them to be lightweight. So they're not these big, heavy things that you're carrying around and using your whole body, like your quads and your back to try to like lug your feet around. So um, these, the black ones and the gray ones I showed you are Wittens um, on Amazon. They're about $30 maybe. Um, and those are, I would say like intermediary shoes, like not intermediary. Um, the word I'm trying to use is like the thing that you can use to ease yourself into barefoot shoes. Um, a more bare, like advanced barefoot option would be something like this. These are Vibram, uh, five fingers. As you can tell, I wear them a lot. Like they are, I don't even care that they're dirty. Um, but all the toes are separate. And um, this is too much for some people to start, uh, especially if your toes are overlapping. I mean, this can cause cramps and pain. This is not the first place to go, but eventually at some point, this is a really great place to go. These allow your feet to spread and move and feel the earth. They're very, very flexible, very lightweight. These ones particularly um, with the mesh, these are really great for using as water shoes too. Um, I also have a pair of these that are not mesh and they're completely covered. They're called KSOs, which stands for keep stuff out. Those are really great for um, hiking because then like gravel and stuff doesn't get into the shoes in my feet. These are um, more expensive. I think these were like 120 bucks, I think. So these are definitely an investment. Again, it's not the first place to start. And I only need these. Like I don't have to buy like six pairs of these um, versus the Wittens. I, I do have two pairs, one light and one dark just for fashion. Um, 
So yeah, you want to start with like an intermediary shoe like the Wittens um, or even like these, these ones here. These are on Amazon too. If you type in barefoot shoe, you're going to see stuff like this. You're going to see the Wittens and other shoes like that. Um, and then you can ease yourself into something that's a little bit more advanced when the time is right for you, like the Vibram Five Figures or the Vivos. Vivo, um, is a, a more advanced shoe and you might recognize them. Once you look them up, you'll be like, oh, I think I've seen those. And then you're gonna start seeing them everywhere, like at the gym. Um, and then before I move on from shoes, I also wanna show you water shoes can count too. So this is how I was able to get my kids to continue um, with their foot mobility, like to maintain the foot mobility and the foot health that they, um, were born with. I didn't want them as in their childhood development to like develop these feet that are being forced into like these really tight, uh, shoes and, um, the barefoot shoes, especially in the summer are like, they live in these and their feet are able to spread out naturally. And they are also super lightweight. These were from Amazon too. I just typed in water shoes and I was really looking for making sure they had a wide toe box, very flexible and a very thin sole. So this is zero drop. These ones have holes in them because they're water shoes. So they're not like, like they're not going to wear them to school on like a snowy day, you know, but they have worn these to school and they wear these to school on as their indoor shoes. So they swap shoes. Their outdoor shoes are actually from the brand Witten. So Witten makes kids shoes now, which is awesome. Um, so I feel really good about my kids and their foot health uh, with these types of choices. So those are options and adults can do this too. Um, I did see a question about boots and um, winter, and I totally get it because I was born and raised in Minnesota, so I get it. Um, you can look up boots, um, barefoot boots, zero drop boots, wide toe box boots. Like look for that information. You're not going to find um, lightweight when it comes to boots because you do need to protect yourself from the environment, but there are options for zero drop and wide toe box when it comes to boots, um, they, they will look a little different than what you're used to. Um, I remember I ordered from a couple of different companies, uh, looking for boot options. Um, when it comes to wide toe box, as much as I hate to say it, um, Uggs do can offer you a wide toe box. If you size up or if you go wide, um, you don't want your feet, you know, your toes to ever feel like they're being crammed together. So you, you want to avoid boots that like have a pointy toe. You want to avoid boots that force that the big toe to go inwards. Um, Uggs are not like, uh, the best option. Um, but most of them would have that zero drop and most of them would have a wider toe box. Oh gosh, uh, my trainer would hate that I even mentioned that, but that is like a intermediary option. Um, and I'm sure you can find other options too that can give you that wide toe box, um, the flat uh, zero drop and um, will help you to kind of have that intermediary. I mean, the, the winter not, might not be the best time. Um, and when it comes to flip-flops and sandals, um, flip-flops are one of the worst things you can wear. Because what's happening when you wear a flip-flop is that your feet, your toes have to grip the flip-flop onto your foot. Whether or not you realize that you're doing it, the only way the foot is staying in the flip-flop is by your toes pressing down into that flip-flop as you're walking. And so that is actually like a backwards pattern to what your toes should be doing in your natural gait. So I would say get out of flip-flops as, as fast as you can. And instead, um, wear sandals that allow your toes to spread. So most sandals do, as long as there's not too much like um, strap, like webbing over your toes, shoving them together. So most sandals would allow that. Make sure there's zero drop. So there's no heel on the sandal. And then um, make sure that there's enough straps to hold your foot in so that your foot is not doing any of the work to um, walk around and, and keep the shoe on. I'll show you um, a sandal that I have. So I have this one. Um, I think I bought this one on Amazon too. You guys, I don't get out to shop very much. So I do, I do find a lot of things online. Um, this isn't 
perfect. You see that there is a little bit of a heel um, lift here, but um, this is much better than other options out there. My toes totally spread. There's a lot of room here. And because of this ankle strap here, this sandal is completely held onto my foot. Um, even I have, I don't know if they're in here, they're in the garage, but I have these shoes from Reef that are, um, they're two straps over the front of your foot. And then there's a strap holding them onto the back of your foot. I love these shoes. I lived in these shoes all summer long. They are uh, zero drop, but they do have a platform. So that's not super great. I mean, don't beat yourself up, do your best, you know, and then also be mindful to, to treat your feet right. Um, someone asked about arch support. Uh, the thing about arches is that arches are weakened when they are supported from underneath. Arches are strengthened when they're, uh, when the weight is put on top. And so the, the foot strengthening exercises that I have built into the foot program will help you to actually strengthen your arches. So if you feel like your feet are collapsing inward, it's because your arches are, um, uh, not woken up, like they're not strong enough to support your body. You also have to have a mental game with your feet too. I mentally have to remind myself to walk with my arches engaged with a good foot gait because it's easy for me at this point still to fall into my arches sometimes. Um, arch work is, is a lot of work. So don't, but, but like, it might make you feel like you have to write it off right away. Well, no, my arches are different. Well, no, I've got high arches, had them since a baby. Well, no, I've got flat feet, had that since a baby. You can, you can work your arches for sure. Um, it might take a little bit more effort and a little bit more time. Um, but you'll see as you do the foot mobility program, um, the, you want to avoid arch support in your shoes as much as possible. Um, right now, like Crocs are all the rage, right? For the Gen Z, um, Crocs are great for that wide toe box. And if you put on like sport mode and put the back of the arch up, or back of the Croc up, like it'll help hold it on your feet. That's good too. But the problem with, uh, with Crocs is that they're supporting your arches. And if you're, if you're supporting your arches, then you're not allowing your feet to do any of the actual work. So again, you'd be fighting yourself, doing all this foot mobility training and then putting your feet in something that is supporting your arches. It's not, it's actually doing you harm uh, in the world of your foot mobility. But I'm not saying throw away your shoes because if you go from arch support to flat feet, you're gonna hurt, it's gonna hurt and it might even strain or injure. So that's why I'm saying is like slowly you will ease into more mindful footwear as your feet become more mobile. And um, people who have high arches, that was the only part of the foot program where I had to make a little note and a little like, um, I actually verbally said, if you have high arches, I want you to sit down for this portion uh, because there is a very specific strength, um, foot strengthening portion that the high arches would not benefit from, but they would benefit from the, sit, the seated version because it's going to help them mobilize more. Um, all right. I'm going to save more of the questions for after I'm done because I'm almost done. Um, the last tip. So the first tip was to do your practices like your self-massage, your foot yoga, your strengthening exercises, and your deep stretches with the ball. Um, the second tip was to practice this daily. Um, you, you really need to shift something in your life and in your body to get a change going in your feet. Um, so you want to practice your foot mobility daily and even better if you can add yoga or like a short walk afterwards with bare feet so that you can use all everything that you've just done. Tip number three is to ease into barefoot shoes and be mindful about your footwear choices going forward. And tip number four is to follow a program or use a specific guide when it comes to mobilizing your feet. Um, so that way, you know, you don't, you don't have to try to figure out what to do next, but someone else can tell you exactly what to do and when. So I created this four week healthy foot feet program uh, with exact programming on exactly where to start, exactly what video to do and how often to do it, exactly what videos to move into. And there's tips on common foot ailments and, and how you can use the program to help 
relieve or prevent these ailments. I mentioned them earlier, like flat feet, high arches, plantar fasciitis, um, a lot of different, I have like nine different ailments that I um, polled the community about and then came back with like, oh my gosh, okay, let's address these. Um, and the program also comes with uh, about, I think, eight uh, links to different barefoot shoes that I would recommend at different parts of your journey, including um, dress shoes. I found dress shoes uh, because it's such an important part of mine and my husband's life to have uh, mobility in our bodies that we're not willing to risk it. Uh, well, he's not willing to risk it for like a good night out in Vegas. I might, I might wear wedges or one night I actually got stuck in stilettos and I was like, oh shit. But the second I took them off, I'm like loving on my feet and like showing my feet like that's, don't worry, don't worry, you did great. <laughs> Let's go back to foot mobility and I can use some of the practices and exercises as tools to kind of um, bring my feet back to their normal healthy state so they don't think, oh, it's stilettos and then just like tense up and then feel hurt and the next day my feet hurt too. Um, so the four week healthy feet program is going to be in the Sarah yoga app. I'm uploading it on October 1st, and I'm also uploading four, um, healthy feet yoga videos. So these are just foot specific yoga videos, and they're going to be in this program. They're going to be in the Sarah yoga app, and you can work through the program and work through those videos. And then three separate, completely different foot yoga videos will be released to YouTube throughout November and December. So right now I'm uploading to YouTube every other week in case you didn't see that cadence. So you'll be able to see two of the um, foot yoga videos in November and one of them in December. And these foot yoga videos that are coming out to YouTube will be um, a foot mobility practice, an ankle mobility practice, and a hip mobility practice. So you can kind of work up that chain a little bit. Um, and then all of those are gonna be in the Sarabeth Yoga app as well. And if you want to um, access this foot mobility program and you want to try out the Sarabeth Yoga app, I'm linking a free trial in the description of this video so that you can go and see it for yourself and see if it is a place that you want to be, if it's a place that's going to help serve you, and if this program can help serve you as well. Um, the seven day free trial that you'll get will also come with a discounted annual and it's pretty heavily discounted. So, um, if you do decide to stay, you can keep that discount for as long as you're a member. Like even if prices increase in the future, you keep your, your rate the entire time. Now, um, as I mentioned, everything is going to start in the Sarabeth Yoga app first. And then in November, I'll upload a little bit more. And that's when things will come out to YouTube. And then in December, I'll upload that last little piece and a couple more videos of the foot program to the app as well. So I would love for you to join us. And if you do, um, a couple other things are coming in the next week as well, like um, the four week foot program, the four week healthy feet program, the four brand new um, foot yoga practices. And also I'm doing three live yoga sessions in the Sarabeth Yoga app on select Sundays in October. So the first one will actually be this Sunday where it'll be like this, except that I'm on my mat and we will do yoga together and we can communicate in the comments and you can tell me what you need. And it, it's very fun. It's very um, connecting and something about actually practicing together in real time feels so fulfilling. So um, the first Live will be this Sunday. If you join us for the free trial, you can join us for that live as well. Um, there's another one the Sunday after. And then the very last Sunday of this month will be a Halloween themed live yoga practice, like a Halloween special. And it's going to be very fun. Think like zombie pose, werewolf pose, monster pose. Like it's going to be fun. Um, so if you are on board for improving your foot mobility and you want to get guided through a step-by-step -step calendar with exact practices, tips for common foot problems, and links to barefoot shoes that I recommend, then I want you to check out the four-week healthy feet yoga program coming to the Sarabeth Yoga app on October 1st using the free trial and the discount that I've linked in the description down below. And now let's get into some Q&A. Let's chat in the comments here. So I am... Um, I spent this morning very relaxed. Uh, I have a photo shoot today. And um, so I was just kind of doing my makeup nice and slow. 
And um, then I, I realized that I forgot to like set this video for the live. Uh, and all of a sudden I was like high anxiety, like trying to get everything going at, you know, at the very last minute, made a thumbnail at the very last minute. Um, and then I sat and meditated right before we went live today. And it just feels so good now to be um, here with you and also to be grounded um, and centered right before I came on. I, I wasn't sure if five minutes was going to do it, but you guys know, I tell you all the time, five minutes is better for you than one hour. So even a couple of minutes a day, whether it's yoga, whether it's meditation, whether it's your foot mobility, it does make a difference. It makes a huge difference. And in during those minutes, you might even hear your brain telling you you're wasting your time. This is just a couple of minutes. This doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference. All right, let's take a look in the comments. If you have high arches, will your exercises help if done over time to strengthen your arches? Yeah. So, um, yes. If you have high arches, the exercises that I have and the, the videos that I have are um, made, they're, they're really going to help all of the foot ailments except for a very specific strengthening exercise that we're going to do would actually um, cause your high arches to become even stronger. Like your high arches are like the brick of your feet. Like they're so tense. And so you need to mobilize your high arches. So yes, the exercises and the practices that we're doing, except for the one, and I'm very clear during that part, if you have high arches, take a seat, do not do this one while standing. So I'm very, very clear so that you'll be totally taken care of. All right. Jean said, um, broken left foot and all surgery was yesterday. Yeah. Take your time. The program is, um, we're running through it together in October in the Sarabeth yoga app, but it'll always be there. So it'll be there when, when the time is right for you. Um, and you'll, you'll notice that, you know, there might be scar tissue and imbalances in your body, especially if you're using a cast or, um, you know, something to help heal your foot, that your whole body might be shifting to try to compensate for that. So as you start to recover and as you start to feel better, be really mindful about the imbalances and the overcompensation and how you can invite more balance to your body slowly over time. Diane said, six weeks ago, I sprained my ankle and re-injured it again this past Monday. I do your 15 minute yoga every day on my yoga break. I'm so disappointed. I thought my ankles were stronger. Yeah. So some injuries, um, take a really long time to heal. And have you ever heard, um, th the lessons te teachers will show up in patterns so um, lessons that continue to present themselves, like an injury that continues to happen over and over, is actually a lesson that you still need to learn from in some way or another. Like, what does that mean for you? Um, so you try not to be hard on yourself. Like, you're still learning and you're still um, growing every day. <laughs> um, but you will have resources now that you can use to help actually bring your feet into your yoga practice and bring more love and attention to your ankles. Um, I heard a quote this weekend that I really liked and it was love is the quality of the attention that you give to things. And so when I'm saying like love on your feet and love on your ankles, I'm saying like, give them some attention, you know, and consistent attention is what's going to make the biggest difference. Um, if you asked a question above, you can ask it again. I'm just scrolling up. Linda asks, um, would this also be the October calendar? So for October, in the Sarabeth Yoga app, we have a brand new calendar feature that we just launched last month where um, this is like a game changer. In the app, all you have to do is open the app, click on the calendar, and press play on the video of the day. And it takes the decision fatigue out of what to do next. And so what I'm doing is I'm preloading the calendar for you so that you have a yoga video to do no matter what. You can always add your own videos into the calendar too. So if you want to do something else, you absolutely can. For October, I've preloaded the October calendar with um, the four brand new foot yoga videos on one day, like Monday, basically, of each week. So that 
for those of you that are like, oh yeah, totally foot yoga, sweet, I'll do it. But you don't really actually want to do like the entire foot program yet. This is a way for you to try it and to start to feel the benefits of it. And if you decide you do want to do the foot program, you can then schedule the rest of the program into the days of the rest of the week. Now, what I did instead was that for the days of the rest of the week, I filled them in with videos from our 10 minute yogi calendar so that every day is, um, a 10 minute yoga video, it'll help you stay consistent in your practice, it'll help you maintain consistency in your practice, but it'll also help you with your barefoot practice because you just did this foot mobility at the beginning of the week and now you can continue to do yoga to kind of like weave that foot mobility in throughout the rest of the week. And my recommendation is to take that video from Monday and like use it for the rest of the week. All right. Let's see where we are in the comments here. Uh, Sue wears Birkenstocks. They have a lot of space for toes to spread and zero drop um, and arch support. So Birkenstocks are good, uh, you know, Birkenstocks and Crocs, kind of the similar, different, but similar, but different. Um, it's a good intermediary. intermediary. Uh, but eventually you want to get away from that arch support. And also with Birkenstocks, if they're slip-ons, you're still doing that thing where your toes are gripping into the shoe uh, on, on a backwards pattern. So you need your toes to grip during a certain part of your gait and you need them to lift and release at a certain part of your gait. But if you have a shoe on that your toes are gripping to keep on when you lift your foot up off the ground, then it's actually backwards of what your shoe, your foot should be doing. Um, my front of my I'm showing you my hands and my arms by the way because we're on YouTube where the entire internet has access and people are weird about feet you know the wrong people are going to come in here and be like ooh she's showing us free foot pics and like no mm, no um but in the actual program we're using actual feet um but what what I was trying to say was that so imagine like this is my foot here the front of my shin was so incredibly tight and immobile from having to flex my foot to keep my slip on shoes on. So that might be happening for you too, is that um, if you're using a shoe that's slip on, you're actually flexing over flexing the front of your calf and your ankle and the top of your foot to try to keep that shoe on. Not only are you doing an opposite gait pattern with your toes, but you're also doing that. Um, and so part of the, you know, foot program for you could also be to like massage out the front of your shin, like take your thumbs on both sides of your uh, shin bone and really start to work in that area. It might not feel like much because the back of the calf has the most, like that's a big sensation, but that front area. And if you have like a roller, Ooh, that, that can be good for that spot too. Um, Susan, can you use those toe thingies women use for pedicures as toe spacers? Yeah, totally. You can, um, again, uh, to toe spacers are a little bit more, um, like they're not as good as they're cracked up to be, but they can help and they can definitely be a thing. So um, the nice thing too about toe spacers, if, if you're using them, is that if you do have toes that cross, a toe spacer can be a great way to help keep your toes uncrossed in inside your shoes even. So some people, instead of having toe spacers that space all of the toes out, they have maybe just like one that like hooks onto one toe, like a little ring so that this toe doesn't like cross over this one as you're, as you're walking, because that might be a pattern that's still happening in your body. So you can totally use those as like a more affordable option too. We talked about the boots. We talked about winter, talked about high arches. Okay. I'm at the bottom now of the comments. If you have more um, questions coming in, let's see. Okay, I'm seeing some comments about arthritis and I've gotta be completely honest, it's outside of my area of expertise. Um, but I would recommend that you find, you, you search for someone who is in functional movement. Um, you can, you, a lot of times you can find functional movement focused people at like a chiropractor's office. Um, or you can like start there, start 
look for like move natural, look for functional movement um, and just start asking around. Uh, problem two is though, is that um, that's not gonna work. The chiropractors are the ones that also got me into orthotics and like encourage the orthotics. So it's just, it can be difficult to find the right, um, you know, the, the right help. Start to look up, do some self-research on um, arthritis and going barefoot. I'll, I'll do some of that too. Um, and see if you can get some more information about that. It's, it's not that your feet are broken. It's not that like, oh, this doesn't apply to you anymore. It's just more like, how can you modify certain elements of this to help support your feet? Um, and you might need to <clears throat> take it slower as you progress through like the foot program or some of these foot videos, really listen to your body. Um, please don't do anything that causes you more strain and more pain, but it might not mean that that thing is completely cut off from you. It might just mean not to take it that far. Do you know what I mean? Um, pronation. So pronation is like, instead of your feet walking normal and you having arches that support your feet, your feet actually start to bend inwards. Um, most people have pronated feet as a result of the footwear and the poor habits. Um, so pr pronation is something that definitely can be improved uh, with these exercises and consistency like the foot program. The thing about pronation is that it's also, as I mentioned, like a mind thing, like also being aware with your mind when you're walking and using your feet. And even when you're just standing there and talking to someone, are you, um, you know, resting into your arches or are you engaging in like lifting? Do you have foot posture? <laughs> All right. Will foot yoga help with posture and back problems? Speaking of posture, absolutely. Absolutely. As I mentioned, um, everything is, is the ground up. Your body is aligning itself from the ground up. And so your posture, your back pain, a lot of this will start to be relieved from the ground up, but it's not a cure. And um, there are other things that you might need to do, like check into if you have an anterior pelvic tilt um, or a posterior pelvic tilt. Um, you want you know your pelvis to be like neutral underneath you most of the time. There are other times where it's actually natural. That's why your pelvis moves. But when we are wearing shoes that have that lift in our heel, then we're shifting forward all the time. We're always catching ourselves. Chances are our pelvis is also tilted back. Like if it was a cup of water, the water would be spilling out the front. And then now your abs are not engaged. Your back is compressed. And all of these other problems start to happen in your body. It's just compensation from the ground up. Do these foot exercises affect bowed or knock knees over time? They absolutely should. We mentioned um, the compensation um, and also the uh, shifting of alignment. Um, so it's, again, not going to be this like cure, like, oh, I did a foot yoga practice one time and now my legs are straight. It's not like that. It's if it, you have to be patient, you need to put some love and attention and consistency into your feet, your ankles, your legs, your knees, things might start to unravel as you work your way up and be patient about that. And also be really mindful that you're not um, doing all of this and then being like, I'm barefoot now. And then you go do like a 10 miler in barefoot shoes because your body needs to do that unraveling and you need to work with your body to slowly ease yourself into it. I mean, that pendulum can totally swing too far. Um, I have a problem with plantar fasciitis. Does your program have a practice for that? Yes, all of the practices. And I have it explained in the common foot issues how um, plantar fasciitis will benefit from this program and even at specific parts of the program that you can focus on for your feet and your common, your specific foot issue. Um, so I showed a couple examples of uh, shoe wear earlier. Um, Yeah, and for boots, check out Lems and Zero. Any advice for varicose veins? Um, not really like in this 
uh, realm of what I'm talking about, but what you can do is um, do legs up the wall and help drain your legs every once in a while, help relieve some of the pressure in your legs every once in a while. I do have some legs up the wall uh, practices on YouTube and in the app as well that you can look up. Okay, dress shoes. Um, so for dress shoes, sometimes I'll do this. Like I have a cruise coming up and um, some of my dresses actually look really good with these. I mean, I'm flat footed, but like it kind of has this relaxed vibe to it. So I wouldn't go glam and then put these on. Um, it's more like a relaxed, you know, a dress, but like more on like the yogic natural side for me. Um, and I can wear these. I'll show you what else I'd wear. They're not perfect. So yeah, someday you're going to catch me wearing these or these. Um, these are not awesome. <laughs> like these are not great, but I get it. Um, you know, I, I also like to wear heels. I do have stilettos and I do have um, like good strap, you know, strappy, chunky heels as well. I'm very mindful about how long I'm wearing them and how much time I'm like training my body in them. You know, um, if it's possible for me to not have to wear them very long or to switch out into a flat shoe for a little bit and just give my legs and my body a break, I'd be happy to do that. If I wore these for eight hours, I would feel that. I would, I mean, things would start to kind of get tweaked and like, mm, it's just not the best, but I do, I do wear these, like I'll wear these to go out. Um, the thing is the the similarities that you're seeing with all of these is that all of them hook on to my foot. So at the very least, I'm not using my foot to try to keep my shoes on. So you're not going to see like clogs, you know, um, everything is, is hooked on to my foot so that at least that's happening. And then what I would do is at the end of the day, when I do take these off before I go to bed, I would actually spend time uh, doing one of my foot mobility practices. There's a 10 minute one that I'm uploading in November um, that uh, I would do at night to try to, you know, and then like kind of thank my feet. Thank you for supporting me. It doesn't hurt to wear these. Um, like it doesn't hurt me. I don't feel pain when I wear these. <sighs> this one specifically, um, I love how supportive it is in the sense that like, it's totally on my foot. Uh, but it, it broke, uh, one night we were heading out, like me and my husband and I were in Vegas. We were heading out. We were going to walk over to the hotel next door and go to a show and a dinner. And I mean, the walk was kind of long and I was like, okay, it's not that long. I'll be fine. If it's longer, I would like Uber or something. So I don't have to walk in those. Um, they broke right when I got down to the hotel lobby, I had to turn around and the only other shoes I had other than my Wittens, which are these ones, were my stilettos. And I ended up wearing the stilettos for the rest of the night. I felt that. I felt that. So, all right. Um, will the videos help with hammer toes? They should, they should. Um, but also everything else that we mentioned should help. Um, again, not the cure but a really great supplement. Okay. I'm going to let you guys go because in an hour I need to be over at a photo shoot. So I'm going to take my time as I gather my things and, um, maybe get there early. So I don't feel like that rush, that, that anxiety, like at a photo shoot, I really want my purest expression to be captured and not my, okay, you got it. You know, and like, like that, I don't need that vibe to be captured. So I'm going to take my time. Uh, getting ready for this photo shoot. And I really appreciate you being here and listening um, because this is a topic that, like I said, a lot of people initially are like, ew, feet, I don't want to talk about that. Why? Like, it's so neglected, um, but it's so important, so essential. And um, I'm really excited for you to start to introduce foot yoga into your journey. So if you're still with me now um, and uh, or you just joined and you didn't hear um, the foot yoga videos that are coming out to YouTube will come out in November and December. So there's three foot foot, foot yoga videos coming out to YouTube uh, every other week in November and in December. But the entire foot program 
The four week foot program and four uh, foot yoga videos are coming to the Sarah Yoga app on October 1st. The four foot videos will be um, dripped out into the app every single week in October. And I'm also doing um, live yoga in October as well in the Sarah Yoga app. And then the foot yoga program and the foot collection in the app will eventually have a total of, um, I think, nine yoga videos. Um, so it'll be a very like compact and not compact, um, expansive <laughs> opposite of compact program. Um, and then you can get access to this program and the videos and the live yoga using the link in the description of this video. There is a seven day free trial. If you just want to check it out and see what it's all about, um, because it's very different than what's here on YouTube, even though everything that is on YouTube is in the app, ad free, downloadable, you can make your own playlist, you can favorite, you can add the calendar. There's all these other features that you can do. Um, but it is the place where I'm at the most and I would love to see you there. So I will see you, whether it's on YouTube or in the Sarah Yoga app, I'll see you on your mat. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And the comments here in the chat actually delete after the live is over. So if you would like to leave something, I would love for you to leave a comment on the actual video after it saves. Once this live is over in three, two, one, namaste. Thank you for joining me today.